That's that's pretty impressive. Uh, the Blue Eddy EB3A running full size gas furnace. Hey everyone, I want to do a quick follow up uh, video to my last one uh, that I'll link you know up in the the top right corner. But in that video, I talked about how you could expand the capacity of a power station, much like this one. And I wanted to just go over uh, a few more uh, in-depth features and testing of this particular unit. Uh, this is the Blue Eddy EB3A. And uh, just make mention of a few things that uh, I think would be helpful to you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the specs and the and everything about it uh, because uh, there are other uh, channels and, and people who go into much more depth about that kind of thing. The main thing I wanted to do was uh, do some real world tests. We know that this can charge devices, cell phone, tablet, laptop, etc. extremely well and that, I think that it certainly excels in that. Charge up camera batteries, uh, you name it, uh, it can do it. But I wanted to explore uh, the capabilities of something this size and, and what it uh, can do for somewhat larger loads, mostly on the AC side. Uh, but this particular unit, uh, the EB3, I think Blue Eddy has really done a fantastic job uh, making a unit that is small, portable, but packs a serious punch. Okay, uh, before we get into the testing, just super duper fast overview uh, over here we have a, a 12 volt uh, cigarette uh, lighter style plug we have two more uh, 12 volt barrel plugs below that we've got two type a usb ports right here we've got a 100 watt usb c power delivery uh, down here we've got a the dc input for solar panel uh, or other dc sources rated from 12 volts uh, to 28 volts, 8.5 amps. Uh, here's your um, AC power inlet for charging, and then your AC outlets. Uh, two of them, the um, inverter is rated for 600 watts, and then obviously uh, the light right here. The screen uh, lights up nicely. It uh, has our input wattage, uh, the state of charge, uh, estimated time remaining to charge or discharge, and uh, the output watts. So uh, on the top, we've got uh, a wireless charging pad, uh, this nice handle, and then the left side, just a vent, the back, nothing, and the other side, another vent uh, down here uh, lower. So that's the super fast uh, version of this. This has lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. But let's test because uh, unlike other small power stations like this, this has a full 600 watt uh, inverter. I want to test a few things that this can run. Um, you know, some, some heavier loads, maybe a TV runtime, uh, something like that. So let's get on uh, to that portion of the video. Okay, first thing to, to check. Power goes out and, uh, and you want to dry your hair. Uh, will it uh, run a hair dryer? Um, again, it's only rated for 600 watts, so certainly this hair dryer won't run at uh, full capacity. But uh, hair dryers do have some, some options, generally speaking. So what we're going to do is start on a low fan first with low heat. And see what that does. Hooked up the kilowatt meter uh, so that we can uh, compare. Uh, according to the Blue Ready readout, let me turn this back on. Uh, we've got 150 watts going out. Um, and according to the kilowatt, we've got 132 going out. Okay, uh, let's turn the heat up a little bit. This is low heat. Let's go up one. And uh, looks like we've got uh, 360, 340. Uh, I know it probably won't do full uh, heat. Let's try turning it up to high fan though and see if that worked. That was too much. So you, uh, for this particular uh, hair dryer, uh, medium or low, low fan speed at medium heat uh, works without tripping the overload. Let's try something else. Okay, uh, next here, um, I've got a dual port Makita fast charger. I've got uh, two 
uh, power tool batteries here. Uh, notice that uh, both batteries only have one bar, so uh, this uh, charger should uh, dump in as much uh, power as it possibly can. So let's start out with uh, the, f the first battery right here. Let's do one at first, see what happens. There it goes. Uh, at the moment, uh, there we go. Now it's starting to juice it. So, saying 88 watts. Uh, oh, there it goes. It's going up. Excellent. Uh, 289, 290 watts coming on the Blue Eddy display, and then about 200 on the nose on the kilowatt meter. Okay. Let's try a second battery. See if uh, we get an overload or if it can do two batteries at once. Let's watch this. And it goes up 100, 300, 300, 70 watts right there. 400, 500, okay, we're, we're going. <laughs> Interesting. Um, now, I think the uh, kilowatt meter doesn't uh, react as fast as the Blue Eddy readout, which is kind of interesting. See, so it'll jump up to 500, but the kilowatt uh, is still, you know, down at 400 or so, and then it uh, goes down, and then it uh, bounces back up. So that's kind of an interesting uh, thing to notice. But uh, look at that. Uh, charge two uh, Makita batteries uh, up. And, uh, and it looks like it's got uh, no problem at all doing that. So that's awesome. Take note that it's estimating about uh, 0 0.4 hours uh, runtime. These batteries uh, really take about 45 minutes to charge. And uh, so that would uh, make sense. Now this wasn't quite 100% uh, state of charge when we started. But uh, anyway, it uh, seems like uh, one full charge here would give you a full charge on uh, two uh, batteries like this. Let's, uh, let's let it run here and, uh, and we'll come back and see once these are done charging how much battery we've got left on the Blue Eddy here. And, uh, and we'll see how many uh, kilowatt hours. It won't be a full kilowatt hour. It'll be uh, less than that, but we'll see how much power uh, we've pulled through the kilowatt meter and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, see the green lights here. Uh, that means that it, batteries are fully charged. Uh, we're only pulling, according to Blue Eddy, 22 watts. According to the kilowatt, uh, 3.4, 3.5 watts. Um, and uh, we've still got 22% remaining in the battery. So I'm sure other uh, power tool brands uh, would work as well, so. Uh, let's do a t test on the TV next. Let's see how much time uh, we can run a TV and soundbar an Apple TV for. We've got uh, the TV going, and then we've also got the, uh, the soundbar on as well as an Apple TV. And we can see over here that uh, I've just plugged uh, all three of those devices in, the TV, the soundbar, the Apple TV, into that three-way splitter, which then plugs into that big yellow extension cord. And then that comes down here to uh, my monitoring setup. Um, so the extension cord is obviously plugged into the kilowatt that's plugged into the Blue Eddy EB38. Um, I've got a little uh, power bank uh, right there, powering the GoPro and the timer, so that way uh, we aren't pulling that power from the EB38 because we want to see, you know, if we want to, if we're just watching a TV, you know, how long uh, does this last? So you can see uh, I already started the, the test. Uh, we're already four minutes into it. Um, let's get down here, turn on the EB38. Uh, so we're pulling, uh, it appears about 121 watts at the moment, 96%. It's estimating 
that we're gonna have about two hours of runtime. So anyway, uh, let's see uh, if that's the case. I plugged in the kilowatt meter because the EB3A's uh, screen turns off uh, quite quickly and we wanna see uh, at what time does that uh, meter shut down. So that's why I've got the kilowatt uh, meter over here. The GoPro is monitoring that as well as the timer. And that way we can see exactly when uh, things shut down. And, uh, and then we'll get an official time for, for how long uh, this lasts. For your information, the TV is a 55 inch uh, diagonal 4K TV. And, uh, and then we've got uh, the, the Samsung Q990 B sound bar uh, with the Apple uh, 4K, so, or Apple TV 4K, I guess. So let's see how it goes. Okay, we are out here in uh, my furnace closet. This is a natural gas fired uh, furnace. Uh, it's a 60,000 BTU model. I just say that so that uh, you know what size uh, fan uh, potentially is in it. I don't know what size fan uh, is in it. Uh, but uh, anyway, it uh, is a train brand. And uh, I've got the uh, Blue Eddy EB3A here uh, plugged in and uh, providing power to it. Uh, it's got about 41, 42 watts uh, of phantom load, just in idle. That's about what it consumes. I'm going to leave um, a link down in the description uh, to, I think it's the DIY HVAC guy. He has a great um, tutorial on how to set up a pigtail from your furnace so that you can uh, safely connect uh, your furnace to uh, a power station uh, like the, the Blue Eddy EB3A. But uh, let's do a test. Can this little teeny thing run a full size? Uh, gas furnace uh, to heat my house in the event of a power outage. Let's find out. I'm going to cut it for here for a second uh, and we'll come back right as the furnace is firing up because I need to go inside, turn the thermostat up and, uh, and trigger it to come on. So hang on just one second. Okay, the induced draft motor is starting. Hopefully you can hear that. Let's see what it's pulling over here. 126 watts. So it happens when the hot surface igniter turns on. That uh, that could pull quite a bit of power. Oh, there it went. Oh, that was why it was heating up. So induced draft. Now the can you hear the the burners going in there? So now it's only pulling 76 watts. Let's see what uh, happens when uh, the, the main blower turns on. Okay, the blower's ramping up. 178, 218, 300, 50, 360, 400. 460, 471, 482, so right about uh, 500, still climbing, looks like uh, low 520s is where it's going to settle. So that's, that's pretty impressive right there. The uh, small but mighty Blue Eddy EB3A can run a full-size gas furnace for residential application. Now, let's talk about this for a second. 530, 540 watts or so. Uh, so right on the cusp. Furnaces, uh, it, this isn't going to apply to all furnaces. This is a uh, high efficiency 60,000 BTU furnace, so uh, I'm not going to guarantee you know that it's going to work for, for everyone, but in my application it does work. 
uh, and you know, would give you uh, heat for uh, a few minutes. 500 watts uh, continuous off of this uh, Blue Eddy is certainly going to um, drain the battery quickly. You can see there our um, estimated time remaining is 0 0.4 hours. So, you know, this would give you 30 minutes worth of heat um, before this uh, battery was depleted. But hey, uh, 30 minutes is 30 minutes. In a power outage situation, that could, uh, that could make a, a serious difference in uh, being able to, to stay warm or keeping something from freezing. That's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, the Blue Eddy EB3A running full-size gas furnace. Okay guys, so uh, from those testing clips, uh, you can see that uh, this unit uh, really packs a punch uh, for the size that it is. You know, obviously it's not going to be your 24 hour uh, backup for those uh, heavier loads, but you know, for the hour to two hour uh, power outage and uh, you need to just kind of keep things uh, functioning, uh, this is the answer. And it's so portable and it has so many uses outside of just household use. Uh, that's by far what I use this the most for, um, is uh, when I go places, camping. It also substitutes here at home. One of the things I use this most for is actually a, a substitution for an extension cord. You know, when I've got just the lamp or the fan or something that I need to run for a few uh, minutes or so, and uh, rather than finding an extension cord, I just grab this and away I go. So, great unit. Um, give it some uh, serious consideration. Uh, it's always usually on sale. You can usually get it uh, less than uh, full retail. So for sure check the links down in the description and be sure and check any coupon uh, codes that can be clipped um, or, or coupons just clipped in general on Amazon's site and uh, and see if you can't uh, get this uh, for, for steal of a deal. <laughs> All right, take care guys. Until next time.